What is going on guys welcome back in today's video i'm going to show you how you can pimp your windows terminal so let us get right into it all right so we're going to talk about three things that we can do in order to improve our windows terminal experience so this means we're not going to look only at cmd but at the whole experience of using a terminal on windows and linux users know how powerful a terminal can be and how important it is to have a good terminal how comfortable it is uh, how awesome it is to have a good terminal and Windows users mainly use CMD most of the time to install some packages. So for example, I can run CMD here uh, to do stuff like pip install matplotlib, or maybe I do something like uh, git push or git commit. Uh, maybe I open up a con environment, maybe I start some tool. And of course I can do some basic stuff like navigate and I can open notepad and uh, I can list the files in a directory and all that. But the Linux, uh, the Windows terminal is not very powerful, especially when you compare it to the Linux terminal. Uh, we do have stuff like PowerShell, but PowerShell for most users is not very attractive. It's more of uh, a terminal that you don't want to use because you're so confused by it. It's not like the Linux terminal. It's a little bit confusing for people who are not skilled in PowerShell and a lot of people don't want to learn PowerShell. So in today's video, again, I want to talk about how we can just make the, the Windows terminal experience a little bit more interesting, comfortable, and a little bit more awesome. Uh, and the first thing we wanna do is we wanna pimp the CMD itself. So before we talk about additional software and additional tools, we're going to talk about how we can pimp the CMD command prompt itself. And of course, a no brainer is you can change the style. So you can just go to properties and all that. Uh, you can change the font size, you can change the font itself, you can change the layout, the colors. We're not gonna talk about the design too much. This is just something that you can do. So for example, if you don't like my style, you can just go ahead and say, okay, I wanna have this font. Uh, this was the background. Um, I wanna have this, this color here as a color, for example, if you like that. I think it's going to apply when I run it again. No, oh, this was the wrong CMD if I type it into start. There you go, now we have a different color. But we're not going to talk about that. We're not going to talk about the style. We're going to talk about functionality. Because what I like to do on Linux is when I have some directories like this programming directory here. And inside of that programming directory, I have different programming languages. So for example, when I open this, you can see C, C Sharp, C++, Go, and so on, and Python. And if I use Python very often, for example, what I like to do with a terminal is I just want to have a shortcut to get there. So I don't want to say CD programming... Uh, or actually first CD desktop, then CD programming, then CD Python. I want to be on a desktop and I want to go to that directory immediately with an alias. Um, so let me open up CMD again. On Linux, I can just use the alias command and I can modify the bash RC file so that I have a simple shortcut whenever I open the terminal. On Windows, this is also possible, but the command is called DOS key, like that. And having a file that is executed at the startup of the terminal is not as simple as it is with Linux. Uh, but I can show you that the result is the same. So I open up a CMD and I can type pydir uh, py for pydirectory. And if I enter now, you can see that I'm in the right path. I can do something like neural dir for my uh, specific neural nine directory, video dir for the video directory, and I can type desk to go to the desktop. Uh, so this is also possible with CMD. Uh, and in order to do that, we need to work with the registry. So I first have to look at my notes here because the path uh, is a little bit complicated. What we do first is we press Windows key and R. So we basically just run it. Maybe you don't want to do that. You can just also go to the start menu and type rec edit. Uh, and you can see here the registry editor. We click on it. It requires administrator um, rights. And once we're here, we have to navigate through the path. So let me just close it, or actually we don't have to close it. Uh, when you open it up, you will see those directories here. You wanna go to H key local machine. You wanna go to software. You wanna go to Microsoft. You wanna go to, what was it? Uh, command processor. So inside of Microsoft, you wanna go to command processor. And here, when you click on that, you can see a bunch of keys and you probably don't have an auto run key. So the auto run key is uh, the thing that you need to create here. So you probably have all of those. You probably don't have the auto run key. So what you do is you right click here. You say new, you say key. Um, 
actually let me let me reverse that here uh you, you right click here you say new you say uh string value not key uh and here what you do is you type auto run this is what you need to name this you call it auto run i'm not going to do that right now because i already have it i'm going to delete that key here um, and the value of the auto run needs to be a path, the full path to a file that you want to execute whenever you start a terminal. And in my case, I have the file aliases.bat. You can call it whatever you want, but this file, let me just uh, open it. Let me just go to uh, CD back and then notepad aliases.bat, you can see that I have a bunch of commands here. So first of all, add echo off, which is just a basic statement so that we don't have to uh, write unnecessary text, then a comment here that I don't so that I don't forget the path. And then we have the commands that are actually executed. And in my case, those are all DOS key commands, which are basically aliases. Uh, and as you can see here, pydir, whenever I enter pydir, this basically calls cd and the directory path for the Python directory and I have a bunch of other paths here. And I also have some uh, commands that the Windows terminal doesn't have by default. So for example, if I go to a desktop and I wanna know all the files, I can do dir, but by default, I cannot do ls, which is the Linux command for listing the files. Now, what I have done here is I have also introduced these aliases here. So if I type ls, this is going to call dir slash d. And this looks like that. So uh, a little bit um, uh, a different order that we have here in a different alignment. So if I type ls, you can see that this is what gets executed. If I type l only, I'm going to see the file names only here. And if I type ll, I'm going to see more details here, which is l, uh, which is dir slash a and um, and of course, those basically mean that I can enter a path after that. So if I want to do something like let's go back and I want to do ls desktop, ls desktop, this also works, as you can see. Um, then I also have cat, you don't have to do these commands if you don't want to. But basically, if I'm on a desktop here, and I want to say, okay, what files do I have here, I have uh, this, um, where is it alias txt file, which is basically a copy of the of the alias bat file that I have here. Uh, what I can do is I can do type alias.txt on Windows to just get the content. But I usually uh, use cat on Linux. So if I want to use cat on Windows as well, I can do that here. Um, and this works perfectly fine. So you create a bat file, a batch file with the commands that you want to execute in this case, dos key space, then some alias that you want to have equals and then the command that you actually want to execute when you call that. Uh, ignore the last one, it doesn't really work quite well. It's a fine string. It, it was an attempt to to copy the grab functionality, but it doesn't really work. So you can just ignore this one. But basically, you create that file, you choose a file path where you want to place that file, you go to the path. Again, it's H key local machine software, Microsoft command processor, right click new string value. And then you call this auto run with a capital A capital R and with a path and then it's going to execute this file every time. So this is the first thing that you can do in order to improve your terminal experience on Windows. Alright, so the second thing that we can do in order to improve our Windows terminal experience is to install a Linux terminal onto our system. And we can do that with the Windows subsystem for Linux. And by doing that, we're not only installing some terminal that works like a Linux terminal, we're actually installing a Linux distribution onto our Windows system. So if you want to do that, you can go to Microsoft Store, and you can just look for uh, search for Ubuntu, for example, or you can search for Kali Linux or OpenSUSE or Debian. There are a bunch of distributions that you can install Then you go to the app, in this case, Ubuntu here. And what you do is you basically install it. You can see that this app is made by Canonical, which are the people who develop Ubuntu, who made Ubuntu. So it's not just some guy uh, developing something for Windows. It's actually the people who are also responsible for Ubuntu. Uh, and you can install all that. I'm not going to go through the whole process here because there's a lot to configure. There are a lot of things that we can talk about to optimize the experience and all that. So this video is not going to be about the Windows subsystem for Linux mainly. I'm just going to show you how to use it and why it's important to have it, why it's cool to have it, why it's awesome to have it. If you want to have a full tutorial on how to install the Windows subsystem for Linux, let me know in the comment section down below. I can make a video on that, but I'm not going to explain the whole process right now. 
You basically go to the store, you install it, you follow the instructions, you Google your way through the uh, through the uh, individual steps of the setup, and then in the end you have an Ubuntu terminal. So you can just type Ubuntu and you're gonna get this app. And when you run it, you have a Linux terminal, which is also a Linux distribution. So I can just uh, do stuff like LS and I can do stuff like HTOP to see all the running processes here. And I can also, if it's installed, use NeoFetch to get information about the system. So it's not just a copy of a Linux terminal, it's actually a Linux system that we're running here. And the good thing is that this allows us to install Linux applications. So for example, I mean, Git, we can also use it in the basic terminal on Windows, but we can use Git, we can use Vim, of course, so I can use VI and I can use, of course, NeoVim, which I like to use quite often. So let's go and call NeoVim here. And you can see this is the file that we talked about before. I can open up different things here and uh, I can do certain things here. I can just quit. Uh, so I can use all these terminal tools and I can also use stuff like LS as I showed you. I can also say LS and then pipe grab.txt. So I can do on the Windows system, on the Windows file system, I can use a Linux terminal. Uh, and of course, I also have stuff like home, right? So I don't uh, only navigate through the Windows system. The Windows system is actually mounted into the Linux system. Uh, I can also use the Linux system itself here and I can also call sudo commands. I can install Linux applications, uh, which is very important. And sometimes there are certain things that you can only do on Linux. So for example, I have a video on this channel uh, that I uploaded recently, which is about how to program Android apps in Python using Kivi. And there, if you want to code it, you can do it on any system. But if you want to compile it into an Android package, you have to use either Mac or Linux. But instead of installing a virtual box or instead of uh, taking a second computer or a Raspberry Pi to actually install Linux, you can just download this Linux terminal and you can do all the compilation stuff in here as well. Now, maybe you say, what if I want to use graphical user interfaces? What if I program a Python script that uses tkinter or that has some matplotlib, uh, matplotlib plots that I want to show? Or what if I want to use some uh, Linux application for this, you can also use the Xming Windows server. So here I have Xming running. Uh, and basically, all I did is I think in the bash RC file, in the config, I have this export display localhost 0, 0.0. So this is for the server. By the way, if you're interested in my config files, be it, uh, be it the aliases, be it the vim config, the input RC, the bash RC, whatever, you can just go to github.com slash neural nine and go to the config files uh, repository. You can see all my config files there. However, once you have that, uh, once you have set that up, you can also use tools like Nautilus, for example. So I can just call this and you can see that I'm actually working with a Linux graphical user interface here on Windows. So I have a solid system here uh, that is running Linux inside of Windows, which is very impressive. And I can do that with Nautilus. I can do that with different applications. I can do that with Matplotlib plot. So I can just use the Linux terminal with graphical user interfaces as well. And of course, if you want to use Linux mainly, get a Linux distribution. But if you just want to have a powerful terminal experience on Windows, you got to have the Windows subsystem for Linux because whenever you need Linux, but you don't want to have a full system running Linux, this tool is extremely powerful. And I use it as my main terminal unless I need to do something Windows specific. Last but not least, the third thing we can do is we can install the Windows terminal app from the store. And for this, we open up the Microsoft Store and in the Microsoft Store, we look for terminal. And when I type tur already, you can see Windows Terminal here. And this Windows Terminal is an application developed by Microsoft uh, itself. So it's not just a random guy developing this app. It is from the Microsoft Corporation, which means that it's very well integrated into the system. You can install it. And once you have installed it, you can just type terminal and you will see the Windows Terminal. And this application is basically combining all the terminals into one thing, into one software. As you can see by default, it opens up the Linux terminal for me. You can also open up the CMD command line here in a new tab. You can open up the PowerShell in a new tab. You can have multiple tabs running at the same time with different command lines. Um, and you can also uh, have a bunch of settings here. For example, what's the default profile? What do you want to open up when you click the plus? What do you want to open up when you start it. Do you want to have an Ubuntu shell? Do you want to have a CMD command line, depending on what you use mainly? In my case, it's Ubuntu because that's the main terminal I use on uh, on Windows. 
You can choose different settings on startup, on interaction, on appearance. You can set the color schemes here, as you can see. And for the individual terminals, you can also define what they look like, how they run. Uh, for example, appearance here, I can choose the font, I can choose the font size, I can choose the font weight and all the different things here. Um, and all in all, this is just a nice application to combine all the terminals. And one thing that I can recommend you to do is to pin that application to the taskbar uh, into the first spot, because then if you have it into the first spot, you can just press Windows key and one. And by doing that, it opens up the terminal because Windows key and a number opens up the number on the on the taskbar. So Windows one opens up the first item, Windows two, the second one. And if you have a terminal opened already, and you press Windows one, you're just going to focus if you want to have a second terminal, you press Windows shift and one and you get a second terminal window uh, opening up here uh, as well. So this is very interesting. This is just a nice application that I like to use. Uh, whenever I use a terminal, unless you know, I need to do something quick in CMD like pip install something, uh, then I just type CMD. But whenever I work on a terminal for a longer time, for example, when developing Django apps or something, I like to use this terminal app with the Windows subsystem and with uh, CMD and with all those things. And I think that those three things, those three steps are very good uh, start to have a nice and fancy Windows terminal experience. Again, if you want to see the config files, just go to github.com slash neural nine, go to the config files repository, and then you can see the config files there. Um, yeah. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.